So, hi friends, welcome back to the Yiscar Scribe. Today, I'm going to be talking about, well, Milo Minneapolis. I think that's how you say his last name. Or Yinimalopoulos, it's, it's a long name. I want to talk about him. If you don't know who he is, he's an individual that came out a few years ago, and um, he was a very well, kind of informed individual that was very outspoken as a conservative, gave voice for many, many years and trolling people. Uh, from what I understand from one of the people that have commentated, I don't know too much about him. So I do know that I've been following his work more recently as he's trying to open a conversion therapy center in Florida. From what I understand, um, that would, might be interesting to call and to talk and to talk to him because of the work that he does. Um, but um, I digress. I do want to talk about one of the comments that he made. Um, if you don't know a little bit about the ex-gay movement, which um, I have several playlists on my YouTube that compile different lists of my TikToks here. If you don't know too much about that, you would really um, need to look up a little bit. Um, there are plenty of people that have said that they um, no longer have attraction and they have defeated demons. Um, I think that sometimes homosexuality can be a spiritual root of something demonic, but when it doesn't go away, when you pray, then maybe it's not a demon. Maybe it's just part of you for whatever reason. And uh, there's a lot of research that suggests that sexuality can change for a variety of reasons and that you can be pushed in a direction, but not, it's not necessarily certain as to why exactly yet that, well, this is the case. But let's dive a little bit further into this and the ex-gay movement and some other topics that I feel are really, really helpful. One of the things that I have really, really understood is that even though people are ex-gay or former LGBTQ, there's a lot of pressure to do performance. And I mean inside of the public, not to have gay voice, uh, to act as though you have everything together, um, and then the more so. So I think those are really, really important to talk about when we talk about this issue. In some regard though, I do think that a lot of people um, like the Jubilee, I uh, keep going back to it, but I do talk about how in Jubilee, people just completely um, demonized a individual on there that they attacked a person rather than talking about the genetic quality or even about the history of Unix. And so most people I feel are very overall uninformed on this subject because it's usually been a conversation point of pray the gay way or deliverance of spirits or those type of things. And that's why it makes it so bad. And also theologically, it's just not sound to treat people like that. So it's part of the whole super charismatic thing where everything's a demon. Do demons exist? Yes. It, theologically, if you are are talking about the journey people go on, is every problem that you face a demon? Well, if they do exist, um, and I was a demon, I wouldn't want to try to make people, like, I wouldn't want to try to work as hard to get people to do things. If I can get them to believe everything's a demon, then I'll watch them freak out while I'm eating popcorn. So I don't tend to take that, that type of stance that a lot of people do take. It's just a really hard thing when we talk about this area because we're talking about preference and we're talking about personal experience. There are reasons that people can get out of those areas. But going back to Milo, um, one of the things that I think that he's doing is he's really researching from a conservative standpoint on conversion therapy, although I don't know much about the work that he does and I'm not too familiar. I will say that one of the things that's really important to note of all of this is that it calls into question the standards of this gender ideology that don't have backing, but have preferential preferences of terms. And I think that that might be what he's addressing. Now, of all the things that could go on in that process of addressing that, I do think that there's going to be a lot of criticism. He said in Penn State University that he had a pile of information that I personally would love to see because I'm that curious and I'm interested in maybe speaking to him. So if you are Milo and you see this video, maybe you should give me a call. Let's talk. Let's kind of work through kind of what evidence that you bring to the table it might be interesting. And, and if there are studies that are suggestive, like there are some studies that have talked about on TED Talks, how uh, sexuality changes over time. 
then that might be very, very useful to know for anyone and everyone. Or like if there is evidence for a gene that where like you have a protein issue and it causes certain things to go on, then it might be helpful to know and making that information available is just overall helpful for everyone. I think though that whenever we talk about XK, there is always this notion that is put on it theologically where um, it's also always going to be tied unless we can start having conversations to can to reparative therapy and um conversion therapy like i've been outspoken on wokeism and as it currently is i really believe that it's making a form of therapy that i call diversion therapy and it basically causes people to run away from all of the things in life and just fully be engrossed in a high level of um emotionalism uh, not to say that that's for everyone that is the case, but it does happen um, that it, I believe strongly that that people have bad experiences. And when people that are former LGBTQ and, for, uh, and ex-gay and the likes, or like people that get married, that were with same-sex partners and, and the list goes on, their stories, like every open-aired conversation, the person themselves is attacked rather than saying that their story is equally as valuable. And that's what I'm noticing as a current ongoing thing with all of this type of gender ideology. Gender ideology is exactly that. It's gender and it's an idea of how things could occur. In orientation is also a newer concept. Even if people are orientated towards something, it doesn't determine your whole reality. It's like if you were born facing the West, you can choose to travel East. That's the same concept. So I think it's just a, a, a statement of orientation being fixed forever that is a debatable. We just don't know. And the science is just not as accurate on that end. Again, you can find those studies online. Now, if you're curious on what those things might be, I could write an article, but that takes a lot of time. So I think at some point I might be going over some of the studies and what this study finds and what that study finds and doing some research on the topic. But overall, I do think that this topic is a difficult topic to talk about because so many people have been hurt from religious trauma or secular abuse or sexual abuse or the list goes on and on that they, in my opinion, I think that especially if they've been in a capacity of social influence or in a leadership role, and they believe very strongly in gender, gender ideology in the sense of gender ideology with wokeism. And it's, it's my opinion that I see they, on a regular ba basis, barrage people with their experience and expect the experience that they went through to be what other people will go through. Or they latch on how other people have lied and, and what they have done to them and expect ex-gays and former LGBT, they expect us to um, act exactly the same way. I don't like the, Ju uh, the Jubilee debate, and the reason largely that I didn't like it is because they really had people that, in my opinion, didn't, there, the woman seemed that was... Uh, Zyla seemed educated um, and very well informed. The others did not. Um, and I don't think that it was very helpful. I think that they shared their personal experience, but they didn't really have like a lot of emphasis. And I think that it's fair to say that they did not really have um, a lot of long lived experience. That being said, I don't think that long lived experience is an exception to everything. I think it's helpful. I just don't think that it determines everything. But this is the problem when we go into these conversations that people can't just bring up their experience and say, I also have seen this and this is also consistent. It's always going back. Sorry. It's always going back to um, someone has more experience than another person and it gets away from options and freedom of choice, freedom of mind, the ability to make a choice, the ability to change your mind on things. I just don't think that that's helpful and it's all over the place right now. But um, I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching my video. And as always, you can uh, stay up to date with all the things, bells and whistles. If you follow us here, like the video, share it and thumbs up. And I will see you on the flip side. You can find me on all social media as a it's just subscribe and
together we can make the world a more peaceful 